Hi, it's Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Uh, welcome to the ADK channel. Today, we are going to be checking out a band called GGFH, and I believe the song's called Real. Uh, I have no idea about this band in the slightest of what we're setting ourselves up for. Uh, Andy, I think you may know what they are about. And Kirk, have you ever heard of GGFH? I've definitely not heard their music. I don't even know the acronym. <laughs> okay, let's go check out GGFH <laughs> and find out what this is all about. We'll share our thoughts and feelings at the end. Let's go. Yeah. All kinds of varieties. You know, it has to do with being a madman and all the madmen. And it's uh, about Aladdin's lamp or Aladdin's fan, the genie genie. GGFH and real. Um, okay, I'll kick this one off, shall I? <laughs> it wasn't what I was expecting from Andy to send us. Um, although you, you did put freestyle, so fair enough. You, you do like some dancey beats and stuff. Not to say that's a dancey beat, but um, that's actually got elements that's got electronica, but also industrial uh in there as well which is uh interesting it's almost an element of it's like someone's done a marilyn manson song and done like a remix version of it at the end you know like sometimes on an album you'll get like someone does a dj remix version of a track and they just take the both cool lyrics of someone's song and they just put like these dancey beats and stuff over it it kind of made me feel of that um quite interesting quite like the track uh video reminded me of just like found footage budget horror movies 
which is a shame in one element because it looked like it was quite interesting horror stuff but it was harder to see because it's quite grainy and it's not as easy and it's quite obscure there was obviously a couple of things like the slitting of the throat which was easy to see what was going on and stuff like that but um it's enough to make me intrigued to know a little bit more about them uh i actually think this is this feels like this is a solo artist like home studio not specifically home studio but it's someone who does all the elements of the recording themselves it's someone who does the vocal over recordings puts all the samples in programs everything in that's what my guess would be if it's an actual band there's not enough instrumentation in there to make me feel that there is an actual band involved um but i know nothing more about it but yeah it was not bad uh worth me probably having another look at and so another track uh we'll come back to addy go to kirk Andy, I have heard of them. Am I right in thinking that you discovered them because they toured with My Dying Bride in the early 90s? I know that My Dying Bride and At The Gates and them, I think might have been on the same bill in the early 90s. Is that where you discovered them? Um, a Peaceville compilation tape, probably, that came with front of the Metal Hammer or Kerrang or something. But yeah, they're, they're Peaceville label artists. And that's yeah, how I've yeah. discovered them. Yeah, I have heard of I've not heard the music. Uh, it reminded me very much of Skinny Puppy. I would oh, say yeah. better than Skinny Puppy. My criticism of Skinny Puppy is great singles band, the albums, they, they really lack. Um, they lack imagination, a lot of those songs on Skinny Puppy's early records that everyone loves. They sound like extended remixes. What I like there, when I'm listening to that type of industrial music, I'm listening to the frequencies, so you're always going to get your bass synth, aren't you? You're going to get the yeah. aggressive drums. They had a real, a real good talent, didn't they, for calibrating the frequencies? There was some really nice and interesting mm -hmm. arpeggiated synth patterns in there as well. I, I really also the other thing is with that again, there's something central about those this music. Listen to the vocals, um, and that imagery just really suits the music, doesn't it? You, you could have that on mute. And, if, and then if you were to press the volume button again and it was playing industry, like, oh yeah, it does match up. It aligns with what you're seeing on screen, almost like a, a snuff film, isn't it? They're trying to it's, include- it, remind, it, actually, it actually reminds me of going to rock pubs and bars, probably yeah. early 2000s, and they would have TVs and stuff playing movies and horror movies in the background. And that's the sort of thing they would put on while you're having your pint in your in your metal pub, but they'd have Rammstein playing and they'd have yeah. that up on the screen. And that's the sort of thing I remember it from. So it's yeah. a good reference point, yeah. Extravagantly dressed uh, cyber goth women as well. I've got a bit of a thing for them. So um, <laughs> that, that, that always puts a smile on my face. Yeah, this is this is dark music, isn't it? Um, this really is the, the man who's um, descending into cabin fever and indulging in some really strange sexual deviant fantasies. Um, so it's not for everyone. <laughs> It'll never get played on the radio. Um, I, I, I've got I've got a few albums like this in my collection. The, um, the English proto-industrial band Cabaret Volta, the 1983 album, correct me in the comments, viewers, I think it's called The Awakening. It reminds me of that. Um, it's It's got some... Yeah, it, it's, it's got a lot of pent-up aggression in there that they never quite release. And I think that's the selling point of it. When I say selling point, I don't mean to get listeners. I mean, to you as an individual experience, it makes you want more. And even when it doesn't arrive at the end, you start to think, what have I just listened to? Um, so I, I enjoyed that. I'm, I'm pleased, Andy, that I finally had the chance to listen to them. They must be good if they, if they toured with My Dying Bride um, and the Angel in the Dark River or Turn Loose the Swans era as well throughout mainland europe so yeah i can see why why you're into this uh, so were they are they still going on did you know um i don't know i mean you've put them in the right timeline this track's from 1993 um the the vocalist did some backing vocals on the uh, i am the bloody earth my dying bride ep you've done a few lines uh, you can tell it's him or you know it's exactly the same as the material on here GGFH, Global Genocide, Forget Heaven, is, is the, what the acronym <laughs> okay. is. This isn't their best track, in my opinion, but it's the only one that they've, they've done a video for. Right, okay. And, um, you know, you say about the, the, the imagery and the video fitting the music, I, I believe it absolutely does. It's, I mean, it's real life horror, isn't it? It's mm. 
you know, you listen, there's a lot of samples, a lot of real life sort of crime police interviews, and it, it's all about, you know, chaining people to the radiator in your cellar and thinking it's okay when you've been caught by the police. It, it, it's, it's really dark music, as you said, Kirk. Uh, I, I think the video, there's, there's a hell of a lot going on there. You know, Dave, you said you'd like it to be more of a story, but it's just, it's just two second images, if that. Another clip, another clip, grainy footage, still images. It, uh, the music, uh, sorry, the video really does fit, fit the music. Um, I haven't actually seen the video before, I'll be perfectly honest, but I do really <laughs> like what this band have released. You know, there's, there's a, this is the sort of main sort of um, style of the songs that they do produce. So some of them are, are just literally sampled with barely any uh, musicianship or, or accompanying instrument or accompanying samples. I believe it's a two piece. There's a vocalist and a guy, and then the guy who produces all the, the sounds and the samples. Um, but yeah, an interesting band, as you say, Kurt, not for everybody. But if either of you want to check out what I believe would be better songs, is it, Room 213, which you may be able to guess is, is based on the life and times of Jeffrey Dahmer and uh, DMDR, which I won't repeat what the acronym stands for on that one <laughs> on this channel. Can I just yeah. get that Cabaret Voltaire up? I don't think it's called The Awake, and I've got it right next to me. One moment. It's really not that important. It really is. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. I, I want to show the listeners. It's called The Crackdown, the 1983 album that I compared it to. Um, it, this is a lot darker <laughs> than this this uh, this album. But um, yeah, sorry. Just had to clarify that. That's your attention. Is, 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 is your OCD kicking in there? I think. Yeah, I'm really surprised that you two kind of like that. I mean, I thought I'm, it's a real curveball for me. It, it was, as I say, it came out. Um, they were on Peacefield, early '90s, along with um, you know, My Dying Bride and Autopsy and the other Peacefield bands of that era. And it was just on a compilation title. I thought this is this is something a bit different. You know, I, I, I'm quite intrigued by this, and I think they're. A very interesting band. Do you know what the, the, the imagery as well? Another thing that came to mind, the Torture Garden. You know that it, that club in London or that touring performance art, the Torture Garden. That that had some uh, some elements of that in there, didn't it? As well, it was that was quite disturbing, um, but at the oh, same yeah. time, titillating. Hmm. There we go. That was GGFH, and the track was real. Now, if you like this video, please do like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on our video sometime very soon. Take care.